1896, the Association of Collegiate Alumni, which is the precursor group to the American Association of University Women, published a report about compensation for women. Here's one of the comments from that report. The woman in industry finds herself employed in occupations which are open to men and who frequently performs identical work for a salary or wages much below those paid her coworkers of the opposite sex and is naturally apt to inquire what reason, economic or other, justifies this inequality. That was 120 years ago. At the beginning of this session, I was asked by Chair Taylor to partner with her on equal pay legislation. The Senate President also quietly and respectfully requested I work with Chair Taylor on her priority bill. A great motivator, by the way. <laughs> I made a commitment to both and set out researching how to resolve a problem that has existed historically for over 120 years. On June 10, 1963, President John F. Kennedy signed America's Equal Pay Act into law. At that time, women were paid 59 cents compared to their male counterparts. Things have improved, but how to close that last remaining gap has remained elusive. I believe that to close that gap, it will require education and enforcement. It was important for me to move beyond the political talking points and partisanship that this issue can engender. The equal pay issue isn't new for me. Last session, I attempted increased enforcement on something that's already illegal. But even my best attempts, with several Democrat women senators co-sponsoring my legislation, didn't succeed. So I want to focus today on the process, because I think it clearly led us to a successful conclusion. We all know that to reach an agreement, you must have at least two willing partners. And in the case of the Oregon Equal Pay Act of 2017, there were many partners that needed to agree. Without the leadership of Chair Taylor, the partners in this effort wouldn't have come to an agreement uh, on the agreement that you have before you today. There was a commitment from those involved, not just to listen, but to truly hear the concerns and work honestly with integrity to reach a consensus of the others in the group. Chair Taylor provided the leadership that was needed to craft the equal Pay Act. She showed incredible principle, courage, and integrity that has led us to this historic agreement that has broad bipartisan support. I have yet to meet a business owner or manager that is intentionally trying to underpay women as opposed to their male counterparts. But we know from the data and research that inequity exists. You don't have to talk with very many women before you hear how real the pay inequity problem can be. This bill allows business to be educated using their own payroll data to make sure it can show that they are paying people equally. And if they are, they are protected. If you find a problem, this bill gives you time to fix it. Some are concerned that the bill doesn't allow you to ask about past pay history until you've made an offer for employment. It does allow you to ask what compensation level the potential employee would be expecting if you offered them the job. There's so many people to thank that helped make this bill possible, and one, every one of them deserves our thanks. Of course, the chair who led the Senate effort, along with the Workforce Committee members, Representatives Leininger and Representative Hack, who led the House effort, of course, thank you to all the sponsors of the bill, and I noticed that there was a sheet going around for people to sign on to this bill, colleagues, and I would highly recommend that you do so. I think you will be proud of that act years down the road. The, equal, the Oregon Equal Pay Act would not have happened without the Senate President and without his legislative director, Anna Braun. Senator Taylor's staff, Amanda Krauss, Michelle Hansman, my staff, Bill Newell and Daniel Knope, uh, LPRO staff, Deborah Marinoff, 
LC staff, Jessica Santiago and Dexter Johnson, and both caucus staffs played key roles as well. Thanks to all these people for their help in making this legislation happen. And also thanks to the activists and business people that gave us input and in the end found a way to agree. This bill is for our mothers, our wives, our daughters, our granddaughters, our aunts, our nieces, and our friends. But I want to dedicate this bill to the next generation of women that will earn more for their entire working career because of our efforts here today. So here's to my daughters, Grace and Emily, and Chair Taylor's daughter, Emily, who were our inspiration for this bill. Because when they enter the workforce, the Oregon Equal Pay Act will have made a difference for them. Colleagues, I ask you to please join me in supporting House Bill 2005B, the Oregon Equal Pay Act for 2017. Thank you.